You're listening to the EdTech Startup Show, conversations on tech, business, and learning with today's top education entrepreneurs. Now, here's your host, Gerard Dawson. Hello, educators and entrepreneurs. This is Gerard Dawson, and thank you for listening to the EdTech Startup Show podcast. I am very excited for you to hear my conversation with today's guest, Amir Nathu, the CEO and co-founder of OutSchool. OutSchool is a platform, a marketplace for live online classes taught by independent teachers. And the incredible thing about OutSchool is the way that it inspires young children to love learning, really children of all ages. And the secret is in the autonomy and flexibility that OutSchool offers the teachers on its platform. You'll hear Amir talk about the origin story of OutSchool and that how it relates to his own experience learning computer programming as a child. You'll hear about the way that he met his founders and decided to start the company, some of the early versions of the product and how it differs from what we see today, his philosophies around learning online education and what he envisions for the future, what he's learned running his company and and his plans for what's next without school. So for anyone who considers themselves a, a lifelong learner, or wants to inspire a young child to love learning, uh, this is the episode for you. Now, for full disclosure, I am and have been for a little while now a copywriter for OutSchool, so Amir and I know each other. Uh, that didn't come up during the episode, but just in the, in the spirit of objectivity, I thought it was worth sharing. If you like today's episode, please uh, share it with an educator or an entrepreneur in your life and give the podcast a rating on iTunes. Thanks so much for listening and enjoy the show. Amir, thanks for coming on the show today. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. So I know uh, you and I have already had plenty of conversations before, so I'm looking forward to diving specifically into into your story and, and your company's story. But for those who are not familiar, can you Tell us a little bit about the company that you started, uh, OutSchool. Absolutely. Yes, excited to talk about OutSchool and and our story. So what OutSchool is, um, we're a marketplace for live online classes for kids. So classes meet in small groups over live video chat. And kids join from all over the country and all over the world um, in small groups to learn subjects they love. And for teachers, it's a creative platform where um, teachers can teach the subjects they've always wanted to to teach and earn money doing so with motivated students. So we started in 2015. We've grown um, really quite rapidly. Over 30,000 families have enrolled in classes, and we now have over 8,000 classes on the site. Um, So that's a quick summary of of OutSchool and uh, excited to talk more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know when I first came across OutSchool, just the basically the freedom of sorts that you um, facilitate, I guess, for teachers was really impressive to me um, as, a, as a public school teacher where the environment is often quite different. So it did make me think a, a fun way maybe to begin the conversation. I'm always curious what people's passions are and what people's skills are that they would like to, to teach. So uh, to put you on the spot, if you were gonna teach an out school class or two, what might you teach? <laughs> well, um, one thing that springs immediately to, to mind um, is, uh, you know, uh, a class on the history of computing uh, taught through computer games because I got into computers, into programming um, at a young age, largely through playing computer games and, and then wanting to build my own games. And so, um, you know, when I was younger and, computers like a BBC Micro or 
uh, uh, ZX Spectrum, which were kind of very old school um, computers. Now um, the the graphics weren't what they are today. You know, the um, very basic uh, monochrome two dimensional graphics, and then as computers progressed and got more powerful, um, and people started developing more advanced games on them um, through my Amstrad PC sixteen forty um, back in the eighties, and 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 then it's the um, you know, Intel 386, he started getting games like Civilization, a strategy game, and Doom, one of the first um, first person shooter shoot 'em ups. I think mm-hmm. um, you know, kids love games, um, and uh, I think we'll be excited to uh, be a great way to uh, introduce them to the history of technology and, and to technology itself and, and how it's developed over the last 20 years. So that'd be the that'd be the, the class that I'd love to teach if. If I had a little, little bit of more time, on a, on a more serious note, I actually did teach a class on OutSchool mm. in the um, very early days, you know, trialing our own platform. And I taught it on startups and business um, because that's something that's very current for me right now. Um, and I have um, some experience in, and we, we kind of took a, a group of kids um, aged uh, around 14 years old who were just starting to think about, you know, careers and entrepreneurship potentially, and we took them around a, a group of startups in, in San Francisco. You know, friends of mine had founded companies that were starting to become successful and you know, taught them um, about uh, various topics in, in business, like you know, the uh, basics of finance um, for a business, how businesses get customers, and we heard from the founders. And so we, I actually did do that class. So it was more serious, but the, the kids were, were very excited about it because um, they'd chosen to be in class uh, because they uh, wanted to explore entrepreneurial careers. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, those, those would be the two two topics, one one fun and one serious. Yeah. What an experience that might have been, too, for those for those young learners, because here they are signing up for a, you know, a, a class, and they, they get to be led around to all these uh, CEOs or founders right in the, in the mix. Um, and that, that kind of, to me, speaks to, uh, another thing that I notice about OutSchool, which is the um, authenticity and the the connection to the the material that the teachers have as well. Absolutely, that's a that's a key value for us. The idea of um, authentic learning experiences and creative ones, which really um, use the full passion and creativity of the teacher. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, uh, many teachers uh, choose to also teach core classes, but what we've found really draws learners in are the creative and unusual subjects that you know maybe the the, the kids didn't even think of as being you know uh, work or you know they, they, they see it as being fun and it draws them in and, and makes them realize that learning can be fun and you know um, for for teachers it, you know it's exciting exciting as well when the students aren't feeling like it's uh, it's something they have to be doing, something they want to be doing. And we see this progression all the time where teachers become successful um, teaching catchy and unusual classes like, you know, math art, and then get the kids excited about math through um, uh, that fun subject. And then um, and then the kids progress on to taking you know, algebra and then calculus classes. And that's exactly the kind of progression of first inspiring the learner um, and then you know engaging them in the subject and giving them confidence and then um, then uh, going through to the path to mastery of core subjects um, that we want to see and enable teachers to deliver mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which just to um, draw a connection seems to echo your own learning experience a bit with computers and, and computer science uh, with you know you didn't set out perhaps individually to write complex code you wanted to build fun games for yourself so it seems almost like the the uh company to a, to an extent scales your own learning experience um that you had throughout throughout your, your life so far absolutely yeah it's you know uh, it's it's very personal for me because um what we're doing out school really does reflect my own experience um, of how powerful it is um, to have learning experiences um, that um, are based on your interests and um, you know, having supportive teachers and parents who help you cultivate that interest and 
that sometimes these learning experiences don't happen in a school context and there are many more experiences that can happen out, outside of school. And so, you know, that was my experience and I was very lucky that my parents, first off, you know, bought one of these early computers for me that um, they let me play games that that wasn't kind of a bad thing. They saw I was really into it and, you know, they were interested and they supported me with that. And then when I became inspired to start kind of learning more and teaching myself to program, they also spotted that and, um, you know, first tried to buy me books and then later a retired economics professor who was starting to teach computer science on the side outside school, they had identified him and um, uh, um, took me along to, to take classes with him. And it's that learning experience that really resulted in my career in technology. And all of that happened outside of the school context. Um, you know, they were very supportive parents. They were also both teachers, which um, I think, you know, uh, hugely influenced me. So I really feel like out school is, you know, it's coming full circle. The reason I'm able to build a product like out school is because of that early learning experience. And um, I'm now able to use that to try and create more in the world and um, enable that, those kind of learning experiences for, for many more people. Mm -hmm. And so as we're talking about the, the, the past a bit, or at least, you know, the, the origins of the company for, for anyone who, you know, as, as you're listening or, or after the episode here begins to look into out school, something I think you'll, you'll notice is the really strong and impressive credentials of, of Amir and, and your, and your team. So it, it did make me wonder with all of the, interesting uh, companies and kind of career paths that you and your co-founders have had. Can you talk about what led you to, to come together and decide to pursue this? Um, particularly with it being really a, a new way of viewing education. Um, yeah, absolutely. And um, it was back in 2015 where we came together formally to, to found the company. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, it had been, um, you know, inspired by events you know, long before then. And myself and Nick Grandy and um, Mikhail Sereguin are the three co-founders of, of OutSchool. Um, you know, we come from um, pretty different backgrounds in some ways, but um, share a passion for the tech and education. I know Nick um, because when we founded our first companies um, around 2008, we were backed by the same investor, a Y Combinator. Um, I went through the Y Combinator program together. So we were doing different companies, but, you know, in the same program with the same investor. And so um, stayed in touch and, and knew each other socially. And, um, you know, Nick uh, went on to be the first engineer at Airbnb. And then in 2015, um, he had left Airbnb and was then the product lead at Clever, um, another uh, ed tech company um, focused on enabling apps um, inside the, the school system. And so, you know, of uh, all of the people I'd worked with, um, you know, when I was thinking, you know, I, I, when I was bouncing around the ideas behind out school in my head and wanted to talk about them, he was like the first person I, I went to because you know, out school's marketplace in education and he has that, that background. Um, and the other piece is he actually taught high school physics um, in, in his early career. And so, um, we started bouncing ideas around um, behind out school and about that, the ideas that we came out school. And, um, you know, after, after meeting a few times, talking through, um, Nick, uh, Nick said, you know, this is great. You should do this. I, I want to invest in it. And I was like, you know, that sounds great. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still working things through, but, you know, thanks so much for your support. And we kept talking about it. And the next time he was like, actually, no, I don't just want to invest in this. I want to, I want to co-found it with you. Let's, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in parallel to, to, to that relationship with Nick developing from, you know, a social uh, friendship in, in, into being a, a co-founder, um, I was also writing about um, some of the ideas we were talking about, and in particular, what we were seeing um, amongst homeschoolers who were pioneering some of the new modes of education, such as using video chat. And um, I hadn't known um, our other co-founder, Mikkel, before, but Mikkel saw some of that writing and reached out because he was also exploring education projects. And 
Um, he also um, has a, a long and illustrious career in, in technology. Um, he started his career at, at Amazon building um, the first versions of Mechanical Turk and then founded his own startup and, and joined another one that was acquired by Google. And he had recently left Google and was, was really passionate about doing something in education to have an impact and because he was about to have um, his first child and you know, wanted to use technology in a way that would be useful for his family down the line. And so, you know, I hadn't known Mikkel before, neither had Nick, but we started working together and realized that there was something really special here, that we had really complementary skills and were able to build, um, you know, a, a really impactful and, and, uh, and a fantastic product. And so that's how we came together and got started. Hmm. Yeah, and so from, from my knowledge, uh, OutSchool as it is today is not identical to version 1.0 that uh, you, you first kind of tested or validated the idea with with more in-person classes, right? So um, because there are plenty of folks who are either beginning or considering beginning their own ventures to listening, uh, education focused, can you talk about how you first kind of brought your idea into reality? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, you know, the initial conception of OutSchool was a marketplace of classes for kids targeting specifically homeschoolers, because we realized that um, in order to get a marketplace off the ground, um, it was very difficult when you didn't have much supply. And so you needed to find customers on the demand side who um, were most likely to, to buy even when you didn't have much supply. And homeschoolers were a, a great place to start um, because they had the freest schedule um, and were already um, looking for innovative um, new ways to give their kids access to opportunity. And in many ways, um, you know, the ideas behind kind of learner-centered education and interest-based learning um, you know, came from um, our early conversations with this community and realizing that's, a, that's something really special was going on there. So yeah, we, we came in with this concrete thesis of um, where a good starting point for building this kind of marketplace was. At the same time, we realized that we needed to learn a lot. None of us have worked in education before. None of us have worked in, um, uh, in, in ed tech before. Nick, Nick of course, been a, been a teacher, but none of us have kind of worked in, in this capacity trying to provide a service in, in education in this way. Um, and, you know, we, we were new to, to this homeschooling community. So we recognized that we couldn't just come in with, you know, our vision and, you know, and say, this is the way it's going to be. You know, we had some ideas, but we wanted to learn. And so doing in-person classes in the Bay Area was a fantastic way to really get to know a lot of the parents, a lot of the teachers personally and, you know, up close and go and observe the classes. And that was um, incredibly important for us to, um, to take away um, uh, the understanding of um, how powerful it was to, to let kids and let families um, pursue interests and to be flexible in how they learn. Um, and, you know, one thing that came out of, and, and we weren't, um, uh, you know, we were open to um, learn and, and find ideas from the community about what kinds of classes they wanted to take and in what format. And one thing we observed from speaking to a lot of those early adopter um, parents was that they weren't just, you know, taking their kids on field trips in the Bay Area or clubbing together to um, uh, create a local class. They were also using a lot of online resources. And surprisingly to us, they were using video chats um, in order to take classes. And, you know, that's not something that we had thought about very much at, at the start. Um, the, we uh, had thought them, there was probably going to be various different formats of, of classes that parents would want. Maybe some would be in person, maybe some would be online, you know, MOOCs and recorded video and written content. You know, we knew that parents were using Khan Academy and Wikipedia and YouTube and Udemy and services like this. But we didn't know that there was actually this kind of interactive learning happening online that's not just content. And so, you know, when we learned that, it was interesting to us because we, um, you know, it's not something we expected. So I think you know, the big takeaway and the thing we did really well was wasn't to kind of stick with our initial assumptions, but to 
follow our own interests in building this company. And when we spotted something interesting, we kind of wanted to learn more and play around with it. And so we, we started experimenting with offering our own video chat classes throughout school and um, bringing on you know, some teachers who are already doing that and some teachers who were new to it but excited to do it. And that part of the marketplace just really took off. Um, and to the extent that in, in 2017, um, we made the decision to move entirely live online. Um, and so, you know, the central thesis of you know, building this marketplace of classes um, to enable homeschoolers and to provide interest-based uh, learning to, to all, all kinds of families, you know, stayed the same, but what changed was, was the format. Um, and uh, I think the reasons it um, proved to be such a powerful format, the, the Lime on Lime format, is it has the best attributes of in-person in that you can actually interact and have a live conversation, which is super engaging, much more engaging than just trying to be disciplined about you know, following along with content on your own. Um, but it also has the power of online in that it's available to um, anyone who has a fast enough internet connection. Um, and that means that um, you can have access to so many more subjects and teachers than you could possibly have locally. So it, it combines the advantages. Um, whereas, you know, um, historically online education has had the advantage of access and variety, but has been you know, about content, and which has proved to be much less engaging and, and hard to get to good completion rates, um, which is, you know, uh, which is you know, critical for, for kids, especially, you know, it's hard enough for an adult to sit down and take a course and remain disciplined about following through on it. For kids, we feel it's even more important that um, there's a, uh, a component of human interaction. So, yeah, that's the that's the story, and um, you know, not something we would have predicted at the start. But I'm really happy with with how it's played out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you just hear out school, kind of your the high level description of it, you know, live online classes, and hear these cool class titles, as you've mentioned, um, math art or um, online baking class, or creative writing with Harry Potter. These are all fascinating, but it takes on even a new level of profundity, I think, when you, when you begin to see some of the stories that are coming out of your community and the way that these, are, these classes and these experiences are really impacting lives. So I'm wondering, I know you encounter you know, anecdotes and data points all day long, every day. But what are some of the, the big stories from your community that you think capture what you're doing for somebody, either a teacher or a parent who's not so familiar with it so far? Yeah, the, there's so many stories because, you know, our, our platform is about people interacting. So there's mm -hmm. so many nuggets to choose from. I, I've got to kind of pick just a, just a few, I guess, <laughs> otherwise we'll run out of time. But you know, the one that really in inspires me again and again is um, one of our teachers called um, Megan Hardy. Um, for, for, for many reasons, so she has one of the most popular classes on OutSchool, mm -hmm. where she teaches creativity and critical thinking skills through Dungeons & Dragons. So she puts together these groups of kids and they learn Dungeons & Dragons and they, they play it online. And it's you know, both a fun and social experience and you know, then she's you know, drawing in um, uh, elements of creativity, problem solving, teamwork, um, you know, basic math as well into, into the game. And um, you know, she joined out school you know, under difficult circumstances where you know, her family was, was struggling in various ways and um, you know, uh, she needed to, to supplement um, her family's income. And um, you know, by creating this, this wonderful class, um, she was able to get to uh, you know, a very high level of earnings, you know, um, more than a full-time um, teaching job, um, and, and, and do that in a very short um, span of time. And um, now, you know, uh, teaches effectively full-time throughout school these kind of classes. And that's kind of a, a type of class and profession that you would – you know, you would never imagine the, mm -hmm. you know, a, 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 a Dungeons and Dragons teacher um, online. And, um, you know, credit to her that, that she hit upon this um, type of class and this topic that was inspiring for many families and then really did a great job. 
Um, and so, you know, that's the kind of unexpected, interesting um, uh, story and, and, and type of class that you can get if you, you know, let teachers unleash their creativity. Another um, teacher who I, who I love talking about is um, Kirsten Bauman, who is a, um, you know, she's not a, a, a full-time teacher or, um, uh, you know, teaching in school. She's actually a UN human rights lawyer. And she travels um, around the world with her work and with her family. Um, and she uses OutSchool with her own kids. And she teaches on OutSchool um, debates and uh, social studies topics. And, you know, what a great opportunity for kids to actually hear from someone working from the UN on these topics. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, I'm always inspired by her story and, and her classes. And, and she's been very successful on the platform. But there's many others. I mean, you alluded to some of the really creative class, classes that teachers are creating. You know, some of the fun ones that uh, I like to talk about are Pet Reptile Social Hour. Um, you know, um, you, <laughs> having so many families, you know, there's, there's enough with pet reptiles that want to share like, their stories about how they care for them, that there's actually a class out that special effects makeup, Harry Potter improv, where kids take on different kind of Harry Potter characters and um, make up situations and, and you know, are super creative in kind of um, improvising um, around that. We had a fortnight discussion group where kids were able to share their stories about their gameplay experience, which kind of mirrors, you know, how I got into programming. So I love to see class like that. And it's great because the kids kept asking the teacher for homework because they wanted to be able to tell the parents, hey, look, I have to play Fortnite. <laughs> so the teacher was very good and, and you know, was careful to, <laughs> to not do that. Um, but, uh, but those are the kind of the fun stories. And um, you know, that's not to say that there is a lot of you know, kids who, are, who get super excited about you know, algebra and um, you know, writing classes and um, book studies and you know, much more cool subjects. And all of that is happening on our school as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, I love the fact that we can combine that very academic um, learning with, you know, the fun and inspirational classes that, that draw kids in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, those are some of the stories that, that I love to talk about. Mm -hmm. And who knows, there's, there may be a young Amir in that Fortnite class who's just waiting for <laughs> <laughs> uh, the future. Uh, Absolutely. Though, though I wonder um, for the future whether whether the the industry you know that, that's taking off right now um, might be different than, than what it was when I was growing up. Um, I uh, I have a young son and I think about that a lot for him and I I wonder whether a professional being a professional esports player might be a, might be a better way to to go these days if you're really into computer games rather than rather than programming because the world is just changing so fast that um, I think the careers that um, you know, kids will be excited to go into in 20 years' time, and it could be quite di quite different from what we see today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and would you be open to talking more a little bit about that? How you see trends, either specifically in education or in the economy, and now with you as a as a parent to a to a young child, how you see education and future preparation what are your thoughts about that broadly you know it's uh, predicting the future is uh, a difficult topic <laughs> yeah um, I, and um i guess you know my main prediction is that change is gonna happen continue to happen and happen faster and faster so prediction is going to become harder and harder and just that high level point i think has big implications on how um, how we need to be thinking about education because um, the great thing about, um, you know, the uh, standardized curriculum of public schooling is access to a, to a common base of knowledge, which is super important for, for our democracy. Um, I think that um, uh, uh, economically, though, uh, it's more and more important that kids develop differentiated skills that are going to enable them to compete in a globalized economy. So you have this problem that you want to create this common base of knowledge, but you can't just um, have kids pursue the standard base of knowledge because that's not the way to develop differentiated skills. And so I think we need to combine that core standardized education 
with um, interest-based learning and a lot of variety. Um, and then, you know, that's, that's kind of my, my first big thought. My, my second um, question um, that relates to this is, you know, where does technology literacy come into this? And I now see coding and in, in general, you know, tech literacy, programming, everything relates to that as, as a literacy um, thing where it, we need to be treating it as a, a core subject. Mm-hmm. That's not to say everyone needs to learn to program to a high level or even aspire to a career in technology or a career programming. You know, we, we teach um, kids, uh, you know, the core language is wherever they are, you know, English. Mm-hmm. And, um, but we don't expect everyone to become writers or you know, English professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we need to treat computer literacy and programming the same way where everyone needs to learn it. But um, it's, uh, it would be an, a, an overcorrection, I think, to seek to push everyone into, into programming or technology related work. Instead, um, we should be um, figuring out what kids' strengths are and finding ways to help them develop those strengths, knowing that the world is changing and trusting that um, through the pursuit of interests um, and matching those with um, the changes that kids are seeing in the world, that they will come to a good place. Mm-hmm. And in many ways, kids are going to be better predictors of the future and what's going to be valuable than, than we will be as adults because they notice so much and you know they um, aren't so... Um, uh, you know, they, in, in some ways, inexperience benefits you if you're ju- if you're just trying to be very observational and not too clouded or, or filtered by by what's happened before and past experience. Mm-hmm. And so that's where my feeling of trust in letting kids pursue their interests comes from. Um, uh, that belief that if, if we do that, then uh, then they'll be able to find ways to um, to make their their interests into something very valuable. Mm. Yeah, well, I agree. You can't predict the future, but that's certainly, uh, I think, a, a well-organized framework for thinking about education for, I guess, the current generation of children and our children's children moving forward. It certainly, you know, um, feels right, for lack of a better, <laughs> better way to respond. Um, we should talk again in uh, five or ten years' time and, and see how things have changed. <laughs> right, right. Hopefully, I can. I'll be able to slap the date on this and put it up on <laughs> uh, how you predicted it properly. Um, so, uh, I have a, a few questions. You know, in the same similar topic of of moving forward, I guess in an area that you have more control over, which is you know your own company and and its product. What what would you like to see for OutSchool or what are your plans for it? If I know that you focus on the, your communities of teachers and, and, and families to help drive what comes next, but from, from your perspective and your team's perspective, what are your goals and visions moving forward? Well, we want um, OutSchool to be useful to millions of families around the world. Um, so we've made a great start and have grown quickly, but um, you know we we have a belief that um, there's so many more families out there that could benefit from this format of classes and the creativity that that teachers are bringing to the platform. And we think that growth in terms of like the number of families on the platform and the number of teachers benefits everyone because the more families there are, the more niche interests will be able to. Um, satisfy. Um, and there's someone, you know, there's someone else in the world who has exactly the same set of interests as you. And there's also a teacher somewhere in the world who, who'd be just the perfect teacher to to guide you through um, uh, and uh, um, uh, that interest and, and help you develop it. And you know, the more teachers we have, the more families we have, the, the better matches we can make. And as a result, the better learning experiences, the more learning experiences that we can create. So that's why we kind of seek to to grow and for us to do that we need to be continually adding more teachers to the platform enabling them to um, be creative um, take away logistics headaches help them get good numbers of enrollments help them make 
help them make it worth their while with um, great earnings through the platform. And for families, we need to help them um, find the exact right teacher, the exact right class that's really going to um, you know, gel with, with their learner. So um, you know, what this means is we, we're very focused on you know, the product features that um, you know, help solve the logistics problem. To make it quite specific in the short term, you know, scheduling is a, is a big, um, a big um, product initiative that we have, making it easier for teachers to define the schedules, say when they're available, um, and then um, make it easier for parents to um, find the classes at the right times that are going to work for them, um, because we need to match the, the topic, the teacher, and, and the schedule. So we're doing a lot of work on that front. And in order to do all this work and to, to grow and achieve um, our ambitions, you know, we, we know we need to grow the team of designers and engineers um, and customer operations people who are all working with us. Um, so that's been a big focus of, of mine personally. You know, how can we um, grow our, um, our team working on this product? And um, you know, how can we organize in a, in a good way that, that we're creating the right features and um, the right processes that really, really enable our teachers and, and help our community of parents? And so we recently brought on our first product designer, um, Jing, who's doing an absolutely amazing job and uh, really you know, leading the charge on, on some of those, um, those uh, key product features um, right now. And you know, we're going to continue to add um, people to the team. We have two starting on, on Monday. And um, so, you know, those are, those are some of the things that we're working on and how I, how I see the company developing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, I think you mentioned, you know, the need to, to bring on more teachers and um, something you've, you've kind of touched on throughout the conversation, which I want to just emphasize is really there's a, a you know, um, I think it's another trend that we have alluded to is this entrepreneurial opportunity for teachers um, even even a current classroom teacher or, or someone who maybe was in, in the past a teacher now has taken a different path but but has that skill set or that that passion so um, what can you say about out school in the in the community of teachers uh, to those who might be interested but but are you know obviously not part of it yet yeah, absolutely. Um, we have nearly a thousand um, teachers uh, published on the site right now. We have a very vibrant um, Facebook group and community uh, managed by Julie, our, our community manager. It's a private Facebook group, so it's currently only available to, to teachers who have been through the approval process. And um, you know, that's something we're, we're conscious of because we'd like to you know, share more of that more widely. So we're looking at ways that we can um, improve like the teacher application process and, and give out more access to our community up front if teachers are considering um, out school um, because we want to provide ways that we can um, help uh, teachers understand what the options are with online classes, how they could adapt their current content to, um, to the new formats and um, mitigate any, any concern around that um, and show that there's a lot of kind of peer support um, available once you, once you get started on out school. Um, so I think this is an area that we um, we need to do more, more work in. What we what we do have is a um, customer operations team with um, several former teachers on it. So that um, you know, as teachers are considering out school and are going through the onboarding process, we try and be extremely responsive and and helpful and um, you know, coming from a from a place where where the, the team supporting um, uh, uh, applicants to the platform you know, have teaching experience themselves, and some of them even offer classes through the site right now um, as well. So you know that team is really really central to um, to um, helping teachers come on board, and, and we invest it, invest a lot in it, and hope to hope to do more there in the future. We are trying to bring on. Um, several hundred more teachers onto the platform um, over the summer in preparation for back to school in August and September. Because what we've observed in previous seasons is there's been this big jump in interest from families as they start planning um, their um, the new school year and um, really thinking about what resources they can provide to their kids to to help them move forward. And so we know there's going to be this 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 big rush in in, in interest and 
we know that um, you know, we'll be able to um, help more teachers get started as um, you know, teaching online um, and uh, get you know, a large number of enrollments at that point. So, um, you know, if teachers are listening um, and uh, are excited to you know, uh, share your passions um, and teach the subjects you've always wanted to teach, then um, you know, I'd encourage you to go to outschool.com slash teach and sign up and start the application process and to, to reach out to our support email address at support at outschool.com for, um, you know, with questions and, and guidance to help you get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Amir, correct me if I'm overstating, but I, I do want to underscore the, the flexibility and autonomy that you allow and provide for both in terms of the, the content that teachers are teaching the format of the classes, when they're happening, how long. It, I'm right to say that there's near infinite possibilities of ways teacher can, teachers can participate in as an out-school teacher. Absolutely. And, yeah, I think that is a point to underscore and is very different from, um, you know, uh, teaching in school or um, potentially through other services. We, as out-school, do not design the curriculum. You, the teacher, decide what the class is that you want to teach. Now, we do have community standards and, and content guidelines. You know, there's some subjects that um, you know, uh, we won't allow in out school. Um, we, we insist that um, classes are objective, secular, and age appropriate. And if you want to teach a sensitive topic, then we'll ask for um, uh, more in the way of experience and credentials for that topic. But, um, you know, it's not like we have a, like a, a single list of here are all the subjects that here are the only subjects that you can teach within our content guidelines and you know, any kind of subjects that uh, you can imagine um, uh, you, you're free to, to go and design and, and put on out school. That's where the creativity comes from. Like, you know, I would have never expected, you know, uh, a Harry Potter improv class, um, to be on out school. I would never have expected, you know, a Dungeons and Dragons critical thinking class in out school or, a, you know, a combination of math and art. And by providing that flexibility to teachers, we, we you know, unleash that creativity, which it turns out families really want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's remarkable to to see all the combinations that, that come up. It, it makes me think of maybe as we're nearing the end of our our time talking here of a, a quote, I believe from a famous technology figure who said something along the lines of the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. Have, have you heard, have you heard that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. And I feel, you know, if people have just the, the typical school experience, then seeing out school will, will help you to realize that the possibilities that are, available today, both for, for families with children and, and for teachers. So, um, Amir, I, I appreciate you coming on the show today. What, what last um, point or, or idea or, or words do you want to leave listeners with? Um, I want to uh, you know, reiterate our desire to engage with um, more teachers who are interested in um, you know, exploring um, online teaching, exploring supplementing their income and, and being creative. Um, you know, uh, I've, I've already you know, encouraged uh, teachers to, to look at our website, outschool.com slash teach. Um, but even if it's you know, just a question or a, you know, a first spark of interest, we want to hear from you. Um, we want to learn about you know, the classes you're currently teaching and, and how maybe you're thinking about the future. Um, so we have a you know, really vibrant and growing community. Our school's in a great place. We recently announced a, um, a, a Series A funding um, for large amounts. We, we have Jennifer Carolan, who is a former teacher, um, joining our board as um, one of our lead investors. Um, so you know, we're, we're in a great place to be able to support you in your ambitions um, if you're interested in, in, uh, in looking at online and in, innovative uh, ways of, uh, of bringing your classes to life. So, uh, yeah, um, to the teachers out there, please do, do sign up. Um, and of course to, to other entrepreneurs thinking about their, um, uh, education projects, um, 
always eager to hear new ideas and help however I can. So um, my email address is amir at outschool.com. Um, and uh, yeah, please do reach out. Well, Amir, thanks for taking the time to talk today. Hopefully we'll have that five-year follow-up to test your predictions for another episode and uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you. This episode of the podcast was brought to you by the EdTech Shop, copywriting and marketing strategy for education startups. The EdTech Shop is run by me, Gerard Dawson. I've been a classroom teacher for eight years, and I've been writing about education for almost as long. Lots of folks running education startups tell me the same thing. It's hard to connect with school leaders and teachers. The EdTech Shop helps you get more schools to sign up for your product and buy from you. We do that by making sure you're telling the best stories of your most successful schools, teachers, and students, and telling them in the voice of an educator. Because even if your product is great, you can't make an impact if no one is paying attention. To start getting more teachers and school leaders to notice your website, ads, and emails, sign up for the five-day copy fix. It's five lessons over email, teaching you the do's and don'ts of writing marketing copy for the education market. Go to the edtechshop.com slash free dash course to enroll. That's the edtechshop.com slash free dash course. Thanks for listening and have a great day.